Rock and Roll to the World! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are with Smile Musa TV. Let's do one thing at a time. You can enjoy here mad crypto travel and songs, of course. Bye bye. Welcome back to Smile. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Smile Musa TV. And today, uh, we have a new topic. Okay. Uh, an introduction to mathematical logic. So again, this is your instructor, your boss. For today's lesson, these are our objectives, no? So at the end of the le of this lesson, the student should be able to translate English statements to predicates or symbolic logic or proportional proposition propositional uh, statements and vice versa. Second, understand the scope of quantifiers nesting of quantifiers, and negations of quantified expressions. Okay. So, this is our topic, no? Logic statements and quantifiers. Now, when we say logic statements, just like in every language, uh, contains different types of sentences, such as statements, questions, and commands. Okay. For instance, is the test today? Is a question. Go, get the newspaper, is an example of a command. This is a nice car. It's an opinion. When you say, Oklahoma is a constituent state of the United States of America, it's a statement of facts. Okay? So, our lesson is about statements. So while question, command, and opinion are sentences, but that is not the lesson for this subject. Okay. So in symbolic logic, that Boyle was instrumental in creating applies only to sentences that are statements. And let us define statements statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false but not both true and false okay. examples let us identify the following statements uh, according to Paul let's determine whether each sentence is a statement okay so a the sum of 5 and 7 is 12. B. How are you? C. 9 raised to 9 plus 2 is a prime number. And D. X plus 1 equals 5. Okay. So, which of the following are sentence? Which of the following sentences rather? state are statements or statesmen okay letter a uh, indeed 5 plus 7 equals 12 so this sentence is true and it is a statement but letter b the sentence how are you? Is a question. Okay, earlier we said a question 
in the subject is not referred as a statement. So a question is not a declarative sentence, thus it is not a statement. Clear? Letter C, you may not know whether 9 raised to 9 plus 2 is a prime number. However, you do know that it is a whole number, larger than 1. So it is either prime number or it is not a prime number. So the sentence therefore is either true or it is false. And definitely not both true and false. So it is a statement. And letter D, x plus 1 equals 5 is a statement. Why? It is known as an open statement. It is true for x plus 4. And it is false for any other values of x. So for any given value of x, it is true or false, but not both. Okay. Now, Let's differentiate between simple statements and compound statements. Uh, in definition, a simple statement is a statement that conveys a single idea, while a compound statement is a statement that conveys two or more ideas. Now, connecting simple statements with words and phrases such as and, or, if and then, and if and only if, creates a compound statement. For instance, I will attend the meeting. I will attend the meeting or I will go to school is a compound statement. Why it is compound? Because it is composed of two statements. You know? So, I will attend the meeting. That is one sentence. Because it can stand alone. Okay? But the word or is a connector or a connective for the two simple statement. And what is the next statement? I will go to school. Okay? So therefore, this or is a connector or a connecting so there are two simple statements i will attend the meeting conveys a single idea i will go to school also convey another single idea so combining them with the word or which makes a new sentence the word or becomes the connective so it is now a compound statement so what is a compound statement? These are statements that conveys two or more ideas. Okay. Now, I mentioned earlier about ball. Boiling is guru. Okay. Now, in 1855, he, he, his lifespan is from 1815 to 1864. He's actually an English mathematician. Uh, he's the mathematical analysis of logic in 1848 is the first contribution contribution to symbolic logic. I, in this book, he introduced what is today called the Boolean logic or algebra. Okay, so he is the very reason why we have the following uh, discussions. Simple statement and compound statements. Okay, so according to George Ball, he used symbols such as a small p, q, r, and so. Other texts will use capital P, Q, R, and S. But in this uh, video, in this in, in our subject for today, we shall be using small letters. P, Q, R, and S. And these letters, and so on and so forth, of course, no? Uh, would represent simple statements, okay? So, they are sentences, okay? But they are simple statements. Again, let me recall, when we say statement, these are declarative sentence, uh, which could be determined as true or false, but not both true and false, okay? 
uh, we have also the following symbols. Okay. This inverted uh, V. This bigger V. Okay. And this one. We call it the tilde. And this uh, arrow to the right. And double arrow. Okay. So they represent as connectives. Okay. Now, they are connectives. Now, they are equivalent to an English word. No? When we say this tilde, yeah, this tilde, that's negation. Okay. So, this is a type of statement. We call it negation. So, when we have P, we say not P. Okay. So, it's a not. So, when we say P, so we have not P. Okay. So, it's the negation. Well, this symbol means it's an N. So, that what type of statement is it? It's conjunction. So, we say P and Q. So, this symbol means P and Q. Okay. While this symbol stands for OR. So, we call it a state, another statement. We call it conjunct disjunction. So, we say P and or Q. Now, now, another type of statement is conditional. Okay? So, we use this arrow to the right. So, we say, if then, if P, then Q. Okay? So, it's conditional. Then, we have the double arrow. The double arrow. So, we have we call this the biconditional. That's another statement. We call it the biconditional. Okay. So it is if and only if. So we read at P if and only if Q. Okay. So please take note of this. Huh? These are logic connectives and symbols. So from now from here on, instead we come up with sentences or statements. We will be translating them into uh, Boolean symbols, no? P, Q, R, and S. Then we have the following, connectives, okay? which stands, uh, which means these symbols has their own meaning, okay? So when we say this tilde, that means not, so we negate the statement. So, whatever the P, we call it the not P. Okay. Now, next will be truth value and truth tables. What are these? The truth value of a simple statement is either true or false. The truth value. So, it is true or false. Now, the truth value of a compound statement, so in here, it's a compound statement. It depends on the truth values of its simple statements and connectives. So, there are two requirements no, for a truth, table, truth value of a compound statement. What is the truth value of its simple statement? And the connectives. Now, we have also a truth table. A truth table class is a table that shows the truth value of a compound statement for all possible truth values of its simple statements. Wow! Well, for each simple statement, there's a corresponding truth value that is either true or false. Now, if you combine this simple statement and you have a compound statement, so the truth values now depends on the Truth values of the simple statement and the connectives. Okay. And we come up with a truth table to show whether the truth value of the compound statement are this and that. No? Okay. So, and we show it using truth table. So we have possible truth values. Okay. Now, again, uh, let us repeat. 
when we say negation of the statement. So, for example, today is Friday. So, what is the negation? Today is not Friday. As simple as that. Okay? So, in symbolic logic, we use this tilde. Huh? That is used to denote negation of the statement. So, if the statement P is true, its negation is false. Diba? So, if P is true, then not P is false. If the statement is false, then it's not T, it's true. Okay? Clear? Welcome back to Ispan Musa TV! Okay. Let's proceed further. So, let's write the negation of the following statement. Can you do the negation of the following statement? Let's have the first one. Ellie Golding is an opera singer. So what is the negation? Of course, very good. The negation is Ellie Golding is not an opera singer. That's right. But letter B, the dog does not need to be fed. That's already negative. <clears throat> the dog does not need to be fed. Very good. The dog needs to be fed. Okay. So that is the negation. Because we said the negative of the negative is positive. That is the same with the, the, the Boolean statement. Okay. Now, we will often find it's useful to write compound statements in symbolic form. Okay. So, in this subject, we are not really very concerned with the grammatical sentences. We are here, uh, we're translating, of course, we need to have correct English, I mean, correct grammar, I mean, grammar, we have to follow grammar. But uh, our concern here is translating English sentence into symbolic form. Okay? Now, we will often find it useful to write compound statements in symbolic form. That would be easy to determine its truth value. Let's consider the following. Okay. Today is Friday. That would be our P. Q. It is raining. R. I am going to a movie. S. I am not going to the basketball game. So if the following are the simple statements and as I said, no, uh, the sentences are represented by P, Q, R, and S. Okay. So in other words, uh, today is Friday. We will write not we will now write it as simply P. Okay. So we will be converting that to into a compound statements. These are the simple sentence. These, these are the simple statements. And let's write the following compound statements in symbolic form. Okay, so let's have the first one, letter A. Today is Friday and it is raining. So, how would you write that? Today is Friday and it is raining. So, of course, this is P, small p. And it is raining is Q. Right? The connector is? Yes, it's correct. N. So we say P and Q. Right? Okay. Very good. How about letter B? It is not raining and I'm going to a movie. Very good. Yes. So, it is not raining. It's actually not Q. Huh? This is not Q. Because Q is this raining. While I am going to a movie is R. 
Okay, so not Q and R. So we say not Q and R. Okay, very good. How about letter C? I'm going to the basketball game or I am going to a movie. Yes, I am going to a basketball game. Basketball game is a negative of S or the negation of S. Because S is I'm not going to the basketball game. Okay, so this is the negation of S. So this is not S. Okay, I'm sorry. So not S, right? Or I'm going to a movie. Or I'm going to a movie is R. So then we have an or. So or. Okay, very good. Okay. How about uh, letter D? Uh, letter D is, if it is training, then I am not going to the basketball game. If it is training, then I am not going to the basketball game. Oh, that's an if then. No? So you notice we have here if and then. Okay. So we have. Okay. It is raining. That's Q. And I'm not going to a basketball game. So this is S. Okay. Therefore, we say it is raining is Q. So this is you I'm not going to a basketball game is s therefore we say if q then s okay very good no? so this will be our solution if q then s okay in the next example we translate symbolic statements into English sentence. Okay. Now, uh, we say P is the game will be played in Batangas. Q, the game will be shown on GMA. R, the game will not be shown on TV5. C, the Mets are favored to win. So write each of the following symbolic statement in words. So, letter A, Q, Q and P. B, not S and R. Not R, rather, and S. C, S, if, and only if, not P. Okay, any volunteer? Yes. Okay. So, very good. When we say Q and P, you say either Q and P. Q is the game will be shown on GMA 5. Then P is the game will be played in Batangas. So we simply say the game will be shown on GMA and the game will be played in Batangas. Okay. So the second one, not R and S. Not R and S. What we have there is R. So we negate that. And combine it to S with an N. So we will say the game will be shown on TV5. Okay, excuse me. Not R. Okay. So the game will be shown on TV5. So we remove the not. Okay. And the Mets are favored to win. Okay. You follow? Uh, the game will not be shown on TV5. So, negation of that is the game will be shown 
on TV5. And the Mets are fabled to win. Okay, that's letter B. Okay, how about letter C? You're correct. No? So, S, if and only if, not P. What is not P? The games will be played in Batangas is P. Not P is the game will not be played in Batangas. Okay, so the answer is the Mets are favored to win if and only if the game will not be played in Batangas. Okay, so I hope uh, you learn about simple statements and compound statements. Now, next is compound statements and grouping symbols. Okay. Now, if a compound statement class is written in symbolic form, then the parentheses are used to indicate which simple statements are grouped together. Okay. Let's have the following table. Table 2 illustrates the use of parentheses to indicate groupings for some statement in symbolic form. Okay, so we have the following symbolic form. Okay, so uh, be careful. So these are already compound statements with grouping symbols. And parenthesis is our grouping symbols. So the parenthesis indicates that Q and not R are grouped together. It's clear. Huh? Q or Q and not R are grouped together. Okay? Because of the parenthesis. Okay. It's an or, but they are in one parenthesis. In the next uh, is P and Q or R. So P and Q are grouped together. Okay, how it is that that that's it is. Okay. So next is P and not Q implies R or S. So in here we have two uh, compound statements. This compound statement rather contains two grouping symbols. Yeah. For this group and for another group. Okay. So we say P and not Q are grouped together. R and S are also grouped together. Okay. Now, if a compound statement is written as English sentence, then a comma is used to indicate which simple statements are grouped together. Diba? Statements on the same side of the comma are grouped together. Take note of that. No? Sentence statements on the same side of the comma are grouped together. Okay. So we say P and Q or not R. P, comma, and Q or not R. So that's an English sentence. So we say Q and not R are grouped together because they are both on the same side of the comma. Huh? So take note of that. The comma is here after P. So it's Q or R. R, Q or not R is grouped together. So we say P and Q or R. Huh? Well, P and Q, comma, or R. So in this case, it's P and Q that are grouped together because they are both on the same side of the comma, on the left side of comma. Do you follow? Okay. Now, if Q and not Q, comma, then R or S. Take note, we have a comma. After Q. Then, therefore, there are two groups here. If P and not Q, that's one group. That's grouped together because they are both to the left of comma. While R or S, R and S are grouped together because they are both to the right of comma. Okay? Is it clear? Okay? No. Uh, next is, if a statement in symbolic form is written as an English sentence, then the simple statement that appear together in parentheses in the symbolic form will all be on the same side of the comma. Take note of that. 
that appears in the English sentence. Okay, let's have an example to this. Okay, of course, no? As we always say, let P, Q, and R represent the following. Okay, so we have P, Q, and R. What's P? You get a promotion. What's Q? You complete the training. And R, you will receive a bonus. Okay. Now, if we are to write this symbolic logic statement as an English sentence. So, take note of that. P and Q are inside the parentheses, therefore they are grouped together. So, letter B. Right, if you do not complete the training, then you will not get a promotion and you will not receive a bonus in symbolic form. Okay. So, right, if you do not complete the training, then you will not get a promotion and you will not receive a bonus. Okay, that is an English sentence. Take note of the comma there. Huh? That's the comma there. Okay. So, the first one is, because P and Q statements both appear in parentheses in the symbolic form, so they are up, they are placed to the left of the comma in the English sentence. Diba? So, if you get a promotion and you complete the training, comma, then you will receive a bonus. Okay. Hello? So, that's the translation is, if you get a promotion and complete the training, comma, then you will receive a bonus. Okay. I hope it's clear. Then, the second one is, because the not P... And the not R statements are both to the right of the comma in the English sentence. So, they are grouped together in the parentheses in the symbolic form. Okay? Very good. So, that is our translation. Not Q implies the conjunction of not P and not R. Okay. Now, you know class, a compound statement and grouping symbols... We could determine its truth values by coming up with a truth table. If you order a cake and ice cream in a restaurant, the waiter will, will bring both cake and ice cream. In general, the conjunction P and Q is true if both P and Q are true. So we have conjunction. Huh? A conjunction is a simple statement. A conjunction is a compound statement rather that consisting of simple statements and they are joined by an N connector. Okay, so we say P and Q. And P and Q is true if both P and Q are true. So the conjunction, the two simple statements, if there are two, must be both true. If just one of them is false, then the conjunction is false. Now, you see the truth table at the right. It shows the four possible cases that arises when we form a conjunction of two statements. Now, always take it note, class, huh, that for each proposition, P, there are true two truth values. One is true and the other one is false. So, if you have two statements, you expect four possible combinations or four possible rows. So, we have P and Q. So, we have four. Okay? So, the usual practice is to, to easily write your truth table. So, we first write P, Q. Then the conjunction is P and Q. Now, we come up with the truth values for P. Since there are two truth values for P, and since there are two propositions P and Q, we expect four uh, possible combinations or order. Okay? So we say 2 raised to n. So we say 2 raised to n. That is our usual thing, no? 2 raised to n. So, when there is only 
one proposition. So, 2 raised to 1 is only 2. True and true and false. Well, when there are two propositions, that's 2 square. So, we have 4 possible rows. Now, we say the conjunction P and Q is true if and only if both P and Q are true. Look at the right, the table on the right. Okay, yes, precisely. It, it is only true when both P and Q are true. Okay? This is only the case where it is true. Well, in here, it's all false. Why? Because when one of the proposition is false, it root value, then it's already false. Okay, that's a conjunction. Remember that class. While a disjunction is another compound statement of the form P or Q. It's true if and only if, no, it's true if, if P or Q, no, if only one of the simple statement is true, then it's true. Now look at the truth table below. Again, uh, there are two propositions, P, Q. So expect for rows, no, to raise to n. So you notice that at least one of the proposition is true, then the disjunction is true. Okay. So in here, let's make it red. Okay. So true. 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 Because one, at least one of the propositions, no, is true. At least one. What what more if both? Okay. But in here, it's already false because none is true. Okay. So that's disjunction. No? A disjunction P or Q is true if and only if P is true, Q is true, or both P and Q are true. Let's determine the truth value of a statement. Okay, first one, 7 is greater than or equal to 5. True or false? Yes, no? 7 greater than or equal to 5 means 7 is greater than 5 or 7 equals to 5. So at least one of that relationship is true, then the statement is true. So since we know that 7 is greater than 5 is true. So that statement 7 greater than or equal to 5 is a true statement. Very good. But letter B, 5 is a whole number and 5 is an even number. So that's a conjunction. So this is false because 5 is not an even number. So because it's a conjunction, both simple statements must be true. So since 1 is false, then it's false. Yes, this is true statement, no? letter C. Because each simple statement is true. Okay. Okay, let's go to quantifiers and negations. Uh, in a statement, the word sum and the phrases there exist, if you remember, and at least one are called existential quantifiers. So existential quantifiers are used as prefix to assert the existence of something. Okay? So yung there exists, no? There exists or at least one. So we call this the existential quantifiers. In a statement, the words none, no, or, or, and every are called universal quantifiers. Okay? So the universal quantifiers, none, no, deny the existence of something. Whereas the universal quantifiers, all or every, are used to assert that all elements or every element of a given set satisfies some condition. Okay. Now, what is the negation of the false statement? No doctors write in a legible manner. Okay. Whatever the negation is, we know it must be true. Huh? The negation cannot be all doctors write in a legible manner because this is also false statement. 
So therefore, the negation is some doctors write in a legible manner. This can also be stated as if there exists at least one doctor who writes in a legible manner. Okay? So no doctors write in a legible manner is actually a universal quantifier. It's a negative universal. So in order to make it positive, you make a, uh, a an extent, existential quantifier statement. So there exists at least one doctor who writes in a legible manner. Can you follow? Okay. So, in table 4a, illustrates how to write the negation of some quantified statement. Okay, take note of this. So, when these are a very important table that you have to remember. Given quantified statements and its negation. So, when you say all x are y, so the negation is some x are not y. So when you say no x are y, the negation would be some x are y. Okay. Statement like some x are not y, so that are existential statement. No? So the negation would be universal. All x are y. Statement some x are y, so that's existential. When you negate that, that's become universal. No x are y. Okay. So please remember that. Huh? So let's write the negation of each of the following statements. Some airports are open. Some airports are open. So that is existential statement. So the negation should be universal. Okay. When you say some airports are open, so that's some x are not, some x are y. So the negation would be no x are y. So very good. So no airports are open. All movies are worth the price of admission. All movies are worth the price of admission. Okay. <clears throat> so that is actually all x are y. All x are y. So the negation will be some x are not y. Okay? So we say some movies are not worth the price of admission. Okay? The third one. Let us see. No odd numbers are divisible by 2. No odd numbers are divisible by 2. Let's go back to our table. So that's no x are y. Okay? So the negation is some x are y. Let us see. Yes. Some odd numbers are divisible by 2. Okay? Uh, I hope you, you, you could translate the English sentence into predicates and the boolean statements into english so see you next video bye bye please do the activity it's posted in your gcr welcome back to ispan musa tv all right rock and roll to the world hello ladies and gentlemen uh you are